In this video, we're going to cover a concept called depth of field. You'll all see this written as DOF. First, we're going to understand what depth of field actually means, and then we're going to look at how it works, and then we're going to look at how to control it. So the first thing, let's see what it means. So let's say we have our camera here, and we've got our lens, and we have this area that the camera can see. Now in that area we might have a tree here and maybe some apples and what we're actually going to take a photograph of is the tree. That means that this area here that contains the tree, this distance from the camera to this distance of the camera is the area that we're interested. It's the area we want to be in focus. So this area is called the field. This is what we're taking a photograph of what we're interested in is the depth of this field. So that's what we're looking at when we say depth of field, is the depth of the field. We want to know how can we control it? Can we make this deeper, shallower? In other words, what if we wanted to make it a deeper depth of field, meaning we wanted to include the apples, or make it shallower so maybe we only have part of the tree in focus and leave the rest of it out of focus. So let's take a look at what's happening here. We have our film or sensor, we have our lens, and we have our subject which in this case is a tree and this camera is focused on this tree. That means that light from the tree is going to hit the lens and get refocused back here onto the film. So that means that this point here on the tree is getting refocused perfectly back to this point on the film or sensor. It doesn't mean that this is the only point in focus on the tree. It just means that everything from this distance from the camera is in focus. Really, any point along this line, when we're focused here, any point along this line is going to get refocused perfectly back to here on the film. Now, we're just going to use one point here just for demonstration purposes because it's easier to understand what's happening with one point than to try to do it with all of them. So this point here that we're focused on, as we get closer to it, it gets more and more in focus and as we get farther away from it, it gets more and more out of focus. So looking at what's happening here, the um, as the light rays are spreading apart, it's getting more and more out of focus. Our eyes are a little bit forgiving and they can spread apart a certain amount before we consider it to be out of focus. So there's kind of a limit here on either side where we consider, okay, that's too out of focus, this is too out of focus. And, you know, it's a little bit exaggerated for this diagram, but, you know, that's just what we're doing here. So this area here, as the light spreads apart, it's getting more and more out of focus. And that distance here from, say, here back to here, this is our depth of field. It's the area where, okay, now it starts to be in focus, and then it starts to go out of focus again. And again, because it's for any point along this line, this is really, you know, this whole area in here is what becomes in focus. Now we want to know how can we control that? Well, if we want our, a wider depth of field, we need to make sure that this light is not spreading out too fast. If we want a shallower depth of field, we want to make sure the light spreads out fast enough so that it, by this point, it's now too spread out, or by this point, it's now too spread out for us to consider it in focus. So let's take a look closer in here and see what's actually happening, and then we'll understand how we can control it. So taking a closer look at our area of focus, we have this area here around the point that we're going to be focusing on here. Now as the light spreads out, we have a limit here where things are still considered in focus. This is our depth of field here. This is the area that's in focus. Now bear with me here, if you consider that this area that's in focus like toothpaste, if, we're to, if we were to squish these lines together, push them this way and this way, this way and this way, well, and then we end up with lines that look like this, 
Well, what happens to the toothpaste? It squeezes up the tube. Right? Now, this is the area that's in focus. And it makes sense because, you know, the light is not spreading out quite so fast. So it's not going to get out of focus quite so fast, which means that a wider area is going to stay in focus. Same thing if we pull these lines closer together and we end up with lines like this. Now the light is spreading apart really fast. The toothpaste squeezes back up the tube and now we end up with a much shorter depth of field or much shallower depth of field. Here we end up with a wide depth of field. So what we really are wanting to focus on is how can we control how fast that light is spreading apart from this point we're focusing on. If we can make it spread apart slower then we can get a wider depth of field. If we make it spread apart quickly we get a shallower depth of field. So let's take a look at that. There's three main ways we're going to have control over this. So in the interest of time here, I've gone ahead and pre-drawn some things. These are the different types of depths of field we're going for. Our normal standard depth of field, nice wide depth of field, and our shallow, smaller depth of field. And then our basic example setup we've been using to show how this works. Now what we want to look at is what we can do to control our depth of field and achieve either this depth of field or this depth of field. So in this first example we're going to leave our subject where it is and what we're going to do is we're going to move the camera much farther away from our subject. We're going to move away from it. And as you can see what this does with the light This now causes the light to spread apart much more slowly and we end up with the toothpaste squeezing down the tube here and we end up with a very wide depth of field. Now again remember that when we're using these examples here we're not saying that this is the only area in focus. We're saying that this area from this point forward all the way back to this point just because we're dealing with this point here but it could be any of these points along the line. So this depth of field is really you know this whole area here so as you can see if we move the camera away from the subject we're gonna achieve a wider depth of field now in this example down here we're going to move the camera very close to the subject and we'll see what that does we now end up with a very shallow depth of field because the light is spreading apart much more quickly and we get our nice shallow depth of field. So again, if you want a wide depth of field, move away from your subject. If you want a shallow depth of field, move much closer to your subject. We're going to list this first method up here so we can keep track of these. And this is distance to subject. Okay, let's look at the next method here. So in this method, again, we're going to leave the subject where it is. Now, before we continue here, I want to explain something. This distance from the lens to the film is called focal length. Now, I'm going to do a whole separate video about focal length because it's really its own subject that could have its own explanation but you should know that that's what this is called the distance from the film to the center of the lens is the focal length and you'll see this measured in millimeters so for instance you know your lens might have a rating saying it's a 28 millimeter lens or a 35 millimeter lens or it could be a 300 millimeter lens and what that's referring to is this distance and we're gonna use a change in the focal length to adjust our depth of field. So let's see how that works. So we're going to leave the film where it is. For both of these examples, we're going to leave the film in the same place and leave our subject in the same place. So we're not actually moving any closer to our subject or farther away. What we are going to do is we're going to adjust the focal length. So if we want a wide depth of field, we want to have our lens closer to 
to our film so that we end up with a nice wide depth of field. So as you can see, we'll have a nice wide depth of field here. Toothpaste squeezes down the tube as these get tighter together and we end up with our wide depth of field. Now we're going to move the lens a lot farther from the film and as you can see that's now going to achieve a nice shallow depth of field because the light is going to be spreading apart much more quickly than before with a you know nice short focal length so here's our focal length is nice and long to achieve a shallow depth of field and nice and short to achieve a wide depth of field. Now again this is a very exaggerated example of what's going on just so you can see but this is actually what's happening. So let's list that over here up in our second way we can adjust our depth of field here which is focal length. Okay so let's take a look at the third method of adjusting our depth of field. For this example we're going to leave the subject where it is and we're going to leave the film where it is and we're going to leave the lens where it is. Okay so if we're leaving all that the same what is there to change? Well this is talking about a subject that we haven't covered yet which is something called the iris. The iris is a mechanism inside the camera that opens and closes a hole to let light through from the lens to hit the back of the camera. And so you might have this mechanism in here with a hole that can get bigger or smaller. The hole itself is called the aperture. The mechanism that creates that hole is called the iris. So here we have the iris at this size and it lets the light through and we get our depth of field. Now what happens if we have our iris here but instead of a nice big hole now we're just going to open it up just a little bit. We're only going to open up this little hole here and let some light through. Well what happens? Well our light can only go so far in terms of spreading out and as you can see what we end up with is this nice wide depth of field. Does that make sense? So by closing down this aperture we end up with a wider depth of field. When we open it back up we end up with a shallower depth of field. Now the size of the aperture is often referred to as an f-stop and you'll often see this on your lens as either f-stop or f-number or on the display on your camera and this is referring to the size of that hole. The way the rating scale for an f-stop actually works in reverse to the size of the hole meaning that if you have an f-stop of 1.4 for instance you're looking at a very wide open aperture. Then you go up the f-stop scale to say 2.8 and now it's closed down a little bit more then 5.6, then you know 11. These are examples of f-stop numbers you may see. The higher up the f-stop scale you go, the smaller the aperture. And this is important because you can think of it as the higher the f-stop, the wider your depth of field. Because if we go all the way up to 11 here, we're getting a nice closed down iris with a small aperture, so we get a nice wide depth of field. So thinking of it this way, we have a large aperture to a small aperture okay and then we have a small depth of field to a wide depth of field okay so let's mark this down as our third method here for adjusting depth of field which is the aperture or f-stop.
So we have our subject, distance, we have focal length, and we have aperture or f stop. So if we want to look at what these do, if we want a nice wide depth of field, we want our subject far. If we want a shallow depth of field, we want our subject close. If we want a wide depth of field, we want a short focal length. For a shallow depth of field, we want a long focal length. So for aperture, if we want a wide depth of field, we want a small aperture, which of course means a large f-stop. And if we want a shallow depth of field, we want a large aperture, which of course means a small f-stop. So I hope this video has given you a good overview of depth of field and what it means and how it works. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in a comment and I will answer it as best as I can. We glossed over a lot of things here. There's lots of details and exceptions and so on and so forth about how this all works. And that those are subjects for later videos, but I hope this has helped give you a good understanding.